Hello, hi, hola, handling greeting blender 2.8 and higher. The professional and architect users of blender probably know this, but the new users could be doing a whole lot better with lighting. Can we have a look and change this default cube into a better scene? Bing. Okay like magic. It wasn't magic, it was editing. But look, here I have something and I'm using Blender units to create the scale. The scale can be found here in units in the scene tab. It's metric. One Blender unit is one meter. And so while this looks really tiny, remember that if it's sitting on the ground and it's two and a half Blender units tall, then we're talking about two and a half meters tall. So this is a scene that's about two and a half meters, which should make you ask, why is the camera way up here? If we're dealing with lighting, if we're dealing with models, if we're dealing with geometry, typically we don't worry a thing about scale. And that's kind of the downfall of a lot of projects. What this place needs now is uh, some, uh, some, some stuff inside of it. Okay. Ta-da! Through the camera. This is the CC0 refrigerator from Blend Swap. This is the pull-down sprayer. It is CC BY. So thank you, Blender Master KO. Also, CC0 from Ruo is one of the greatest models I've ever had the pleasure of appending, frankly. Now we have these objects, which looks like the setting and with the right camera view. We could do a render here, a rendered view, and you could see not much. Now, right now, all the lights are exactly the same. So when we take a look, we have this big bright scene. It's like, oh, wow, I made something in Blender. I'm an interior decorator. I am now doing architectural visualization. And I think you know you're not, but you can, with Alt-D, change one of them from a point to a spot and they all become spots. There's hardly any fall off to these lights. And when we talk about the power of these things, here's one of the hallway lights. The power to this light is 10 watts, like nothing. The power to one of the kitchen lights is a warm 25 watt. I could lower that down to a 10. And the like, you know, imaginary halogen, which is kind of warm, it goes towards the blue. And you can see how little I put it towards the blue, but it still makes a grand difference in that shaded area. It looks very blue-violet, doesn't it? It's only 16 watts, and there's only three of them. So lights are very powerful things, but it's just not compelling, is it? Well, IES. What we've been doing with lighting is using Blender Lights IES profiles created by... Pixar for use in their render man and you could go and you could pick up 80,000 free profiles and it is split between 50,000 and 22,000 profiles or you could perhaps just sort of chill out and go click at the uh, pixar.com and you'll get 19 that's not 19,000 <laughs> that's 19 and this is how easy it is. With, a, with the light selected, I'm going to go into the shading tab. There's nothing here, but when I click Use Nodes, there it is. We see it. Now I've gone and downloaded these IES profiles, and I've put them in a folder called IES, and I have here 19. Shift A, Texture, not the image, but that thing right over it, I-E-S. It will ask, where does this information come from? Is it internal? Are you writing it yourself? Have you gone and created a text file full of I-E-S information? It is external to the Blender scene, not internal to the Blender scene. So same trip to your I-E-S folder. That was pair we took a look at. See? Asset 50, asset 100. Asset 50, asset 100. Dot IES. I'll accept this. Is this going to be a color? No. The factor is going to go into strength. Well, nothing changed. Well, because we're not really looking at it yet. Let me do a render border here. Let me disconnect what we just did, which is so easy. Let me render, and it will render inside that render border. 
And now we go from the spotlight of Blender, which is tinted blue at 16 watts, and you can further change the power of those three Alt-D copies by changing the strength here inside the uh, node. The default is one, so I leave it at the default. I plug this in to strength. Oh, what just happened? A lot. I'm setting up the cover shot and uh, just wanted to remind you of something. What I noticed is that when you use nodes, it defaults to using the strictly white color. We've already decided that this should be the sickly green color of fluorescent lights. Here's the thing. Take the color that you've already decided with your blender lights, click on the, uh, on the edge. I found it works better if you go to the edge of this thing, not in the middle. Click and drag it into this. Now it's no longer stark white, but it is the weird fluorescent green that I uh, kind of uh, wanted to go with. I could also click and drag it here and drop it there. And then that will translate over into the um, into the shader of the nodes. You can see that these are not set to strictly white light. Ooh, okay, so that was a long interjection. Now back to the video. So now does the power and wattage have any effect? Yes, it does. But I don't really know what to set it up as. So why don't we save this and make a new file so that we can take a look at these IES textures. Okay, here we are. We have carelessly set up a scene to test a light. And when in cycles we press render, we get this. And it's a point light. Now I'm going to tell you this again. Remember scale. Okay, we carelessly set this up. How big is this thing? This thing apparently is 10 meters tall. This is a three-story building. So if you're thinking you're going to set this up like a candle or a little light bulb at a dining room table, and you're going to use a three-story building to double check the lighting conditions, you have forgotten the first thing. Check your scale. 3.43, let's go with that. Now, I will knock this down so we're thinking that maybe it's a security light and a security light is up around eight feet or something and I'm not good with these units I can change them to imperial units and now I see it's about ten feet up I said eight feet right so I can put this down to eight feet and then here we have my uh, almost 12 foot high building. So with the light selected, what I can do is now go into the shading tab, use nodes, and for that light, which I will render, I do what? Shift A. And the texture I use is IES. Presumably I have downloaded some textures which are external to this Blender file. I go in to the IES folder where I put them. Now, from Pixar, I have three things to look at. So here's Umbrella IES, and I connect that to the strength. What happens if I do it as a spot? Should these be spots? Should these be points? Should I be using this with the sun? I do know that a 1 watt strength 1 is awfully strong for this, so I could go fishing around for something else, and I could change it from the Umbrella IES to an X arrow diffuse, and there we get a little bit of flavor on the wall. So I'm at a one. I put this up, it begins to blow out the light. If I really want to see the light, and I suppose I could recommend just shut it down to zero. So you're really only looking at the light. And with the light paths set for reflective caustics and refractive caustics, and everything is, you know, full tilt here, you're also looking at some fireflies from the light that's bouncing back up off the ground. So a strong light is going to give you a lot of fireflies because it's reflecting off the ground. To change some of that, you might deactivate some of these and then adjust the clamping so that the indirect light doesn't have such a, such a ferocious effect. I'm leaving it the way it is because I want to see what the light is going to do. So I'm putting this back to one watt. I'll adjust the strength here in nodes if I need to adjust the strength. Uh, X arrow, there it is. So X arrow shows this hard line and it has something around the edge. So it looks to me like they're using a real hard spot like a, like a torch or a flashlight. Maybe I'm going to tinker with this so I can figure out what it is that they did.
The blend of one makes it super soft. The blend of zero makes it a little bit harder. Increasing the wattage does not bring that design. Increasing the strength does not bring that design. Since lights are focused with the lenses, uh, especially things like halogen lights, what makes the biggest difference is the distance of the light from the subject. And that's exactly the way it should be, right? Changing the size of our spot does not change the, let's call it a projected pattern. If I open it up, it actually shows me that ring now. I kind of fish a little bit and match my spot to the design of the IES. And now when I lower my lamp to what was it, about four feet, where everything is kind of focused in the middle, now I can see this brighter band around the outside. These are really cool. How can we eg uh, uh, exaggerate the effect? Well, if I subtract, I don't want to clamp because that will lock me between zero and one. So if I take whatever these numbers are right now and I begin to subtract overall, I bring everything down. Anything that was close to zero is eventually going to touch zero. Zero times anything stays zero. So even if I multiply this by 100, because I have subtracted some values that I can't even see, those values that have landed at zero stay shut down. And yeah, you can clip accidentally into objects. So this is top post. It's one that pretends to bump into the shadow of the post that's casting it. And the light fakes bouncing. I turned our bounces down to zero. And this light is faking the bounce. That's cool. And that renders like no one's business. So whether you have a scene or whether you have something simple along these lines, remember IES is a useful thing. Thank you to the people who provided models. Thank you to people who are joining and uh, encouraging me by subscribing to the channel. Only 3% of the views I get on videos are from subscribers. So figure that out. Okay. I hope this helps an awful lot of you. If you have more questions, I would love to be your go-to guy for answers. Feel free, drop comments and likes. I appreciate it. You have a good time exploring because that's exactly what this is all about is going in and double checking more and more what's right for your project. Do not get spoon fed. You go ahead and do it all by yourself. Blend on and thanks for watching.